Lisa here, Prims on Greenway. Today is Saturday, April 16th, 2022. It's actually the day before Easter. And if you recall, last year at Easter, um, I did a, a gift to my watchers, subscribers, friends of a tutorial. I did a tutorial on making a fabric Midori journal that you could use for stitching or journaling or whatever you would like to do. So if you're interested in that tutorial, um, just look back on my channel. It'll be right towards the beginning. This year, um, here at Easter, I wanted to gift you another tutorial. I, in fact, uh, taught a class at Hobby House Needleworks a couple Saturdays ago. And in preparation for that class, I made some handmade goods uh, for the attendees. Um, some of the goods included these cute little triangle pillows. Uh, some were just uh, prim fabrics, cotton fabrics, and others were um, done in wool applique. I did them in a variety of colors. Um, and I will insert some photographs um, here uh, so that you can see I made a bunch of them. I don't know. 40 or 50 of them, and they sat in a bowl in the center of the table and just looked awesome. Um, so uh, I will insert uh, some photographs here. And today, today uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, not actually do a tutorial on these uh, thin pillows, but I'm going to do a tutorial for the other item that I made for everybody. This item was uh, very individualized. It is a 12 by 12 uh, paper box um, that I embellished um, with each person's name as well as motifs from the wool applique sampler that I was teaching. And um, everybody was thrilled with the boxes. And so I thought I would do a tutorial on how to make a box. Now I cannot show you one here at the beginning um, because I gave them all away. I will insert some pictures here. And as you can see, um, these boxes um, are have a fabric strip around the top of the box, and then um, it has been waxed to give it a primitive look uh, just on the top. And then the motifs are uh, cut out of various papers. And um, I thought, why not um, make one for myself? And if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to do a tutorial and gift it all to you. So um, here we go. Um, some items that you're going to be needing. One is a box. Um, do you have to use a 12 by 12 box? Absolutely not. You can use any type of paper mache box um, that you'd like. Um, the 12 by 12 boxes I obtained um, online at, I believe it was Joanne Fabrics, but I think I've also seen them at Hobby Lobby. Um, they were not very expensive. I think they were in the $5 range. I then uh, used some antiquing wax. Let me bring it into the picture here. Uh, this I had bought in years ago. Again, I believe at Joanne's. Uh, the brand is um, Delta Ceramicoat. Uh, wax, and this is in the color antique, which is kind of a chocolatey brown. And uh, then I used various fabrics, and again, those are up to you. Um, I used cotton fabrics. Um, you can use a variety of colors, um, patterns, etc., whatever fits your motif. 
You don't have to wax if you don't want to. You can just uh, leave the box um, the color that it comes in. Um, then you will need uh, some glue. In this tutorial, I used um, Elmer's Craft Bond, Permanent Bond uh, Glue Stick. And I also used a product by Beacon called uh, Fabri-Tac. Um, both of these items I obtained at Walmart. Other than that, um, the rest of what you're going to need basically is uh, paper. Um, you can use any types of paper. You could use construction paper. You can use a scrapbooking paper. You can use Tim Holtz paper, which is what I used. And I do show them later in the video. Um, and then if you want embellishments, I used bunches of buttons, but of course you could use any type of embellishments uh, you would like. Uh, certainly you could glue on charms or um, lace or other such such uh, items. So um, I have filmed this in um, segments, so I'm going to try to meld them together. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. And um, if somebody does give it a try, please post on Instagram and tag me. I would love, love, love to see it. So everybody, happy Easter and enjoy the video. So here's the first step in making one of these boxes. As you can see, to start with, I have an extremely messy table just filled with junk. <laughs> Actually, not junk, but future creations. Um, this is the way I craft. When I get going, things are everywhere. But anyways, uh, let's get back to the task at hand. Uh, this is uh, the top of the box. Um, this is ceramic coat wax in antique. It's kind of a brown color. It is liquidy. I just used some old cotton rags and we're just going, I'm holding the camera and, and doing this at the same time, but as you can see, you're just going in these circles and you're going to want to cover cover the top of the box and just slightly down the edge of the box um, over here um, because we're going to put a band of fabric around it. So um, if you don't mind, I'm going to continue to do this and we'll show you when I have it complete. Hang tight. Okay, so our next step is making the um, binding that's going to go around the uh, edge of the top of the box. And so what I started by doing was cutting some fabric um, strips. These are one and a half inch strips. Um, certainly I think you could do them slightly bigger. Um, if you wanted to because my strips are coming a little less than an inch and the edge of the box is more like an inch so you know it's up to you um, how you want to do this i'm using a um, tape maker i had bought this on amazon um, a set of them quite a while ago and this is actually the first opportunity i've had to use it uh, it's a little bit fussy i'm wondering if maybe i should have made my strips a little wider for this because it's not coming out real even but you know me i'm prim i'm good with it so basically you're going to feed it in that large end. It comes out the small end um, kind of uh, folded like this. And as it's coming out, I'm pressing it here uh, so that it's pressing down. So um, I have to say it is a little bit fussy, but it does make it easier than doing it by hand, which of course you could. You could just um, see sometimes it gets caught up here a little bit. Um, you could just as easily have finger pressed this over and then used an iron to press it down. So um, I'm, I'm hoping this is a little easier, although I'm not sure, as I said, it's a little bit on the fussy side, but maybe it's because my fabric's not wide enough. I'm sure there's sewers out there who can tell me um, what exactly I'm doing wrong and why it's being kind of fussy. Um, either way, I'm getting through it. I think you get the gist of, of what we're trying to do here. Um, I like having the edges folded. Um, certainly you could do it unfolded if you want that more raw look, um, but I kind of like that, that little bit of a finished look um, on the edge rather than um, kind of just leaving it raw like that. But again, it's, it's completely up to you. So what I'm gonna do at this point, I'm actually going to sew these together. So um, the way we're gonna do this is you're gonna put right sides together and you're gonna put it under the machine and you're gonna sew it. I go back and forth a couple times to make sure it's sturdy. And then what you'll have is um, kind of a nice sewn edge there and we'll have one long strip. Okay guys, so I'll see you in a few minutes after I get these sewed, hang tight. All right guys, I'm very sorry, I forgot a step before we actually sew it. 
<laughs> what we're going to do is I'm actually going to um, just put a little sliver of glue in here to glue this down. Um, last time I used uh, Fabrifex or Fabri-Tac. Um, you know, I might actually try my craft bond. Let's just see if this will work. Um, I don't want a ton in there. You know, I just want a little bit, and I think the Fabri-Tac kind of gave a little too much. So I'm going to kind of use this on both ends here and just put a little bit in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it again and just lightly go over it with the iron. I'm not going over it heavily. I just want to see how nice that kind of glued down. Maybe this is better than the Fabri-Tac. Um, uh, this, is, this is Elmer's Craft Bond. Um, this is something I picked up, I, I think, at Walmart. Um, of course, you know, crafty stores are going to have it, probably Michael's, Hobby Lobby, those types of places. Um, I think it really works well for my, my paper crafting. Um, I don't know what the difference is, but it actually works better than just like a regular school glue stick for some reason. They say that it's um, a permanent bond. Um, I don't know what makes it a permanent bond, but uh, I'm just telling you, I think it works a little better than um, the regular school uh, glue sticks. So just throwing that out there. And actually, this is working much better than um, the Fabri-Tac uh, that I had used on my boxes for my class. So um, so there's one all tacked down and beautiful. Um, let me do the next one. I'm sorry I had forgotten this step, kind of forgot about it until I got to the machine and I was like, oops. It is a little sticky here. As you can see, my fingers are a complete and utter mess um, from the wax. Um, but that's okay. It's all about crafting, right? So let's get the iron and I'm just going to iron that down a little bit. Boom. See how nice that is? That's wonderful. Nice and crisp. I'm loving it. And so we have the longer one. Oops. Longer one here. I got stuff hanging out all over people, as I said, when I craft. Holy moly, it's like a like a bomb went off here. Just a bomb. But you want the real thing, don't you? I had somebody comment one time and saying how everything comes out perfectly, but things don't always come out perfectly, quite honestly. It's um kind of uh what's the word? Trial and error. It's trial and error. Some things work out, some things don't. You try something different, just like here on the fly. I'm trying the glue stick instead of the fabric tack. So, it's all good. We're good. And again, I guess that just harkens to my prim style that, um, you know, it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And actually, I like it when it's not 100% perfect because it looks a lot more prim. But that's just me. And this is coming beautiful. This glue stick is just zipping along here. And then once I get this done, we're going to, um, then I'm going to do the sewing that I mentioned earlier. And then we'll have one long strip and I'll, I'll show you the strip. And then we're going to glue it to the box. And that's going to be awesome. All right, guys, I'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks. All right, guys, we're at our next stop. So this is the waxed box top that I told you about before. I actually did wax uh, the sides because, as I said, my strip is slightly narrower than the side of the box. Not by too much, but uh, just a little bit, as you can see. So, um, so here's my long strip. As you can see, I just kind of attached it on the machine. You know, again, it's not perfect, but, um, you know, it looks okay. So um, I have three different color fabrics. I kind of want to get them all seen on the box. So um, I'm going to put uh, this one on the edge. As you can see, there's, as it's coming around, it's going to go all the way around the box here and here. And then what I like to do is I like to match to, or have them come together, um, you know, at one side of the box here like that. As you can see, um, I'm going to cut them so they overlap, eh, maybe about an inch. They'll overlap a little bit and um, and glue everything down. So the way I do this is, um, you know, I start at this end 
and I flip up this and I put the glue, oops, I flip this up like this and then I put the glue on here like this and then I put it down like this. So hang on a second, let me see, I'm gonna see if I can show you. I am gonna use the Fabri-Tac for this part. I know the other part I did the, uh, the glue stick, but this one I'm using the Fabri-Tac. So um, here we are, we're gonna put it on. Hopefully you'll be able to see here. Here's the Fabri-Tac. I'm gonna go around the corner there a little bit. So I think you can see that in the camera. And I'm just gonna put this like this right over the top. And I'm gonna just kind of press it down here a bit. Again, sorry for my dirty fingers, but it's a dirty job, what can I say? So I got that, got that glued there, okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of do this other side here. So we're gonna bend it back. And here we are, we're gonna put some more hammer tack on here. Gonna go all the way to the end and a little bit around the corner. There we go. And I'm gonna hang on to this here. We're just gonna flip that over like that. Press it down here a little bit. Doesn't that look cute? Loving it. Loving it, people. Okay, now we're gonna rotate our box, okay? I'm just going over to this side. So I'm gonna bend that back a little bit. I'm gonna get the Fabri-Tac. I'm not a lefty, so this is not going well. Let me switch, switch hands. I'm a, I'm a definite righty. So here we go. I'm gonna go all the way along the whole edge of the box. The top one I started in the middle just because that was the beginning. I did one side at a time, but here I'm I'm going down the whole edge. So here we go. Can you see my glue? You can kind of see it there. And we're gonna go right down the edge. I want to pull it a little bit taut. Not real taut, but a little bit. You don't want any waves on it. Doesn't that look cute? Loving it, loving it. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm flipping over to the other side of the box. I'm just going to let that go there. Flipping over to this side of the box. Can you see it here? We're going to put more Fabri-Tac. Fabri-Tac. Now, I, the way I heard about this, again, was from watching Paper Crafters. And um, they use a lot, one called Fabri-Fix, which I really couldn't find except online. And one day I ran across this. It was at Walmart. And I said, well... It looks like the same, it's the same company, it's Beacon. It was the same company and it said it bonds fabrics and leather, glass, lace, wood, trims. Um, you know, it seems like it does everything. So I, I use it for a lot of different things and I've been fairly pleased with it. Uh, there we go. There we go, look at that guys. Is that not cute or what? I'm loving these red fabrics. Loving these red fabrics here. I'm not even sure I got that kind of in the middle. I think I do somewhat. Okay, so now we're coming to the end here. So this is when we're gonna wanna measure this out. As I said, I kinda eyeball it. I kind of want it somewhere in the middle, just yeah, somewhere around here. So for this one, I'm gonna cut off a bit here. Okay, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna fabric tack this down. So I'm gonna get around this corner. Whoops! Can you see this? I don't know if you can see this. Not the greatest setup in the world here. I'm gonna get around this corner, and we're gonna get this filled in here. I think it's gonna go about this far. We'll see. So let's bring this around like this. This and I got a little bit more I didn't get, so I'll do this last little bit. I want this whole thing glued down here, like that. Boom. Okay, so we got that glued down pretty good. Now, this one, as I said, we're going to bring over about to the middle. 
which I think might be somewhere in that range. Um, I could actually measure it, I suppose, if I wanted to. Um, 13, so six and a half. Actually, it was pretty good. It's it's right over here, right over there. Maybe a finger's breadth from, from that little nick. So let's do it. Let's do it right about about here. Boop. So we're going to set that aside. And we are going to glue this right on top is what we're going to do. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so let's get this glued. We are working our way. Put some on top here. Need to do... Well, no, I think that's probably pretty good. Okay, and... I kind of stained the fabric a little bit, but that's okay because what I do to kind of cover the junction up is I put a nice big old primitive button on there. All right. But let's, I'm going to say let's let this dry before we do any of that. I am thrilled with the results of this. As you can see, it looks great. Um, cute, cute, cute. Here's the junction there. There's the junction over there. Again, you could use 10 pieces, three pieces, one piece, different colors, whatever you want. Depends the style you want. You don't have to wax the top. I just like that look. It gives it a kind of a prim look. And then putting it on the regular colored box, I like the two-tone look. Again, you could wax the whole box, wax none of the box, different color wax. You could do them black if you wanted. Um, you know, you could paint them. You could use acrylic paint of any sort. Um, use your imagination. This is fun. So I'll be back in a few minutes and um, we'll uh, find ourselves uh, a nice button. But before I do that, that'll be the crowning glory at the end. Before I do that, uh, we're going to um, find some motifs to put on here. So hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, now we're at our next step. As I had shown you, um, we got our... Um, fabric strips all glued down uh, for our cute little sides. We got our top uh, waxed uh, to give it more of a prim look. Um, I did proceed to choose, uh, sorry I'm shaking you, to um, choose a very old button uh, from one of my button collections and I did put some red thread. I'm continuing with the red theme. Um, lately I've been into red and in fact have done a few um, small red samplers. So I put some red thread um, in this old old button um, that will eventually cover up the seams. Um, that I'm going to do absolutely last, so I'm going to set that aside. Um, in order to put a, a scene, a paper scene on here, um, I found some inspiration from the various crafting books I have. Um, I think for this, the ones that are going to be the most helpful are... Um, quilting books that probably have um, applique in them because they have various um, various scenes in there. I have several Blackbird quilting books that have lots of flower scenes uh, that would be on various quilts. Um, and I did show this on my channel um, not too long ago that I had picked up at uh, Country Treasures in Brockport, New York. And this is by Bonnie Sullivan and Kathy Schmitz, and it's called French, French Inspirations for artful hands, and I absolutely love this book. I have yet to make anything from it. However, today I am going to use some motifs from this book to create my um, my box cover. So um, when I uh, was looking through this book, uh, the first thing that struck me, because I'm on a red, a red roll, I called it in my, in my Instagram, um, I really loved this red, see the red bird in the middle? I To me, it looks like a, a dove, I think, but I could be wrong. But I, the red with the, um, with the vines around it, with the little red berries just struck me. And then the red triangles going around there, I just love it. Of course, I would absolutely love to do this quilt, but it would probably take me... Um, 
two lifetimes to do so. So um, instead, I'm going to pull some motifs from there and um, create a beautiful box with lots of red. <laughs> so what I did, um, as you can see, I have some paper patterns here. So let me just turn the page to kind of give you a glimpse. I probably really shouldn't be showing you the patterns, but it's just so you can kind of see. This is, I'm just going to give you a glimpse. This is kind of the patterns that are on there. And so I trace them just onto some regular old um, line paper from an old notebook from one of my kids' uh, school days. And um, I traced it on there, and then I found uh, some... Um, Crafting paper, um, I love, I mean, there's all sorts of them out there, but I absolutely love Tim Holtz's stuff. It's it's kind of my genre. Um, let me show you here some of these packets. I got a lot from this one. Um, this is an ideology packet called um, Backdrops. Um, it's actually Christmas, uh, but I found some reds um, that would actually uh, do the trick for me. Uh, as you can see, you can see on the back the different um colors that they show you i think i ended up going with uh with this red here and then for my berries uh this red here um and then i used various greens uh some tim holtz some other uh greens that i've had uh for the greenery um so uh just so you know you can purchase these online um you can also i tend not to purchase these online but um I tend to purchase them at Joann's, and um, if you keep your eyes peeled, sometimes they'll have all Tim Holtz 40% off. That's when I tend to purchase things. Um, so anyways, this one was Christmas. Just to show you another pack, this is also an ideology, um, basically just called Volume 1, and um, lots of beautiful, sorry for the glare, but lots of beautiful papers in here um, that I just love. They're, they're just all up my alley. Um, here's another smaller one that was a Christmas one. This one's called Worn Wallpaper Scraps, um, and they were Christmas themed. And again, I got these after Christmas. I think this was 50% off. Um, so, uh, sometimes these patterns, um, aren't super Christmassy, and some of them are, but, um, I just love them. I just, I love Tim Holtz. Do you actually know that on Saturdays, now, I'm not going to say every Saturday, but I'm going to say most Saturdays. Um, he does a live, and he'll do demonstrations of his products, show you various ways to use them. I find them super interesting. Um, he gives a ton of information. Uh, most of it goes over my head, but um, I love watching him. And obviously, if you don't catch the live, um, it's there on YouTube. So um, if you're interested, uh, definitely give a watch. You're going to learn learn a whole lot about painting and paper crafts and multi uh, what's that called? Mixed media. Mixed media. I'm off on a tangent. I'm off on a tangent. Anyways, getting back to French inspirations, um, I went ahead and traced the pattern on some line paper. I also traced um, some of the um, leaves uh, that went along uh, with that pattern. Um, and this is kind of a little doodad kind of thing. And uh, then I used a hole punch to do the berries. They're just little circles that are about an inch. With a hole punch, they come out uh, absolutely perfectly um, and are so easy. So there it is on the red. And these Tim Holtz uh, papers, by the way, they also have a second pattern on the back. So you're kind of getting double duty. Of course, when you're only using one side, you never see the back. But um, if a project comes along and you don't need red, but this fits perfectly, you just have... A another alternative paper to work with. So I love them. They're very good quality. So anyways, okay. So, um, so I cut out, I cut out, uh, my papers and, um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just lay them out here on the box. And as I said, I kind of like to have, um, this area right here, um, as the front of the box, cause that's where I'm going to put my button. So, um, I'm going to have my pattern with that, um, here at the bottom, and then this would be the top, and we'll work this way. So um, I took some green, um, some green paper, and I cut a uh, cut a vine. Uh, let's see if I can get you in camera. Hold on one second here. Hold on one second here. Let me move this over here a little bit. There we go. Now we're in camera a little bit better. So here is. Oops, I don't want that whole thing to fall. Here is this. Here's our vine. 
So I'm just gonna set this. We're just gonna set these on here, see how they fit, see what we like, see what we don't like. Um, here's the big old red bird that I just love. Um, just so you can kind of take a peek at him. He's awesome, he's awesome. I'm gonna set him over here as if he's kind of taken off um, in that direction and we'll see how we go with this. Um, I'm gonna do some of these. This is a this is also a Tim Holtz. Oh, I don't know if you can see this really well. It's kind of washing out. Mm, that's okay. It's a little bit darker than that of uh, a green, but I'm just gonna set this over here at the base for the moment, and we'll see if we like that or if we don't. Um, let's see here. I think I'm gonna set this as another Tim Holtzy kind of pattern. There we go. We're gonna set this over here, see if we like that. We'll see. And here's one of these swirly whirly thingamabobs that's also in a green. And um I'll set this right about here, I think. Uh, but now it's interfering with the bird, so let's rotate that a little bit. Let's see if we like that or not. Somewhere in that range. I could move it up here a little bit. Maybe that would be better. That way it doesn't interfere too much with the bird. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, and then I have uh, another um, kind of greenish paper that has some printing on it. There. It's coming across a little blue, but it is actually green. Uh, I think I'm going to set that somewhere up in this range here. Um, and then I have another one of these uh, swirly-whirly items, and I think I'm going to put that one kind of up there. And now for all my berries. Let's put a cluster of berries down in here, I think. And as far as a stem to the berries, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to leave it abstract or if maybe after I glue it, maybe I'll just use a little pencil to pencil in a little stem. I don't know. I um, we'll see. Let's do a cluster of berries in here too. Make that of a cluster. We could overlap them a little bit, like they're really clustered in there. That might look cute. And then oh, I have, I have. Oops. Pardon my reach. Um, I'm gonna put a little cluster here on the end. I don't know if I like four, maybe I like three better. Hmm. Yes, okay, and now I have a big blank space here which on that chart, if you remember, or on that picture um, in French Inspirations, I love those red triangles. So I picked another reddish paper. Um, it has a little bit of a, a print. I think it might be called a calico print. Uh, it's coming across probably a little plum colored. Um, but I'm gonna set this here and a little overlap there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I dug out, um, I'm a button freak dug out some buttons that were kind of grungy and I was thinking of just putting them on one in an upside down position but but kind of in rows does it give that kind of symmetric feeling or the feeling that they're on a button card maybe like those old old button cards yeah, maybe I want to take that out I have like some darkers Darker here. I'm trying to get them kind of in the middle. And then I think I'm just going to leave this paper for now blank. But I really, really digging this. Um, what do you guys think? 
I'm kind of digging this. Um, I'm hoping you can see this pretty good. Maybe if I rotate it so it's facing you guys a little bit better, you can kind of see what I got going on here. So there we go. I can't lift it too much because everything's, oops, going to slide away. So basically what I need to do is um, I need to glue everything down. And then as a final thing, I'm going to glue on this right up here in the front. And then we will put the lid on the box and we'll see how awesome it looks. I am thrilled with this red. I'm just big into red lately. And this really floats my boat. So I'll be back in a few minutes to uh, show you the final as I glue things down. I am going to use my uh, Faber-Tac uh, to do my gluing. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay guys, here we go. This is the final product. Here is the box in all its glory. Um, I'm thrilled to how this came out. Um, I think the camera's picking up a little bit more purpley hues than reds, but in real life they're they're very deep reds. You can kind of see the bird there a little bit better uh, as a deep red. Um, here's the front of the box. As I said, I did not stain the bottom. I kind of like that two-tone um, look to it. Let me see if I can get to the side. Um, there's the two-tone look to it. I kind of like that. Um, these are 12 by 12 boxes, so they're very roomy. Um, I really didn't do anything to the interior. Of course you could, um, but I am just thrilled as um, to how this came out. I love this this pattern from uh, the book French Inspirations. So I'm hoping you might be inspired uh, to make your very own box. Um, and again, do it in your style. Um, this really doesn't take very long, um, maybe a couple hours, um, if that, uh, to make this box. It was a load of fun and uh, you can be so creative uh, with something like this. And uh, then you have a uh, fabulous project box storage. Uh, so everybody enjoy. And uh, if you do make one, post it on Instagram and tag me. Uh, I am Prims on Greenway. Um, you're on YouTube as well as on Instagram. And I would love to see your creation. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. Happy stitching. And happy box making and paper crafting. <laughs> Take care. Have a good day.